Hello friends, this is Sanjeev Kaushik and I trade for a living. In this video, I want to talk about the Apple versus Epic, the legal battle that has been going on for a while and only recently the court has came up with its own rulings. So I'm going to dig deeper into the ruling, what were the major points of contentions and towards the end of the video, I would also share what the analysts have to say about this ruling and how it can impact Apple, its stock performance, its profit margins and earnings and so on in future. So let's get started with what the actual battle is all about. You see, in the lawsuit that was initiated and filed by Epic actually had 10 major points of contentions. So in a way, it is alleging Apple to be unfair towards the app developers. So a couple of major points worth noting here is the first one, Epic says that Apple acts as a monopoly. And it says that Apple has a lot of controls. Uh, to an extent, those are unfair controls on the app developers. And one of those controls, which is the second point of contention, that is the in-app purchases that a customer makes on the Apple App Store. Every time that purchase takes place, Apple takes a cut of 30%. Now, if it is a one-off payment, let's say someone wants to install the app and they made the purchase, then 30% would go to the Apple and 70% would go to the app developers. But if within the app itself, if the recurring transactions also happen, let's say, in, let's take an example of Epic itself. It's a video game developer. So if someone wants to buy a feature for their um, video game character, so if they want to make some kind of a purchase through the app, even for all those purchases as well, Apple would take 30% as the cut. So in a nutshell, doesn't matter when the payment is made, Apple takes its cut of 30% flat. And Epic alleged that 30% is a little too on the higher side and Apple should be much more flexible when it comes to uh, charging the app developers. So, Apple in its response said that we do not think 30% is too high and we're not going to budge on a ruling. And what else? You see, Apple is also adamant on making sure that all the purchases happen through the Apple's App Store. So if any app developer wants to provide any other payment gateway to its customers, Apple will not allow that. So not only the app developers will have to pay 30% on every purchase, but at the same time, they cannot provide any different payment gateway to their customers. And this is something that Epic was not happy about. So a long time ago, maybe months or years ago, what Epic did is they stood up their own payment system. And all it had to do is encourage its existing app users to go on that different payment gateway, make the purchases over there, and they would make the purchased feature available to the customers in their app that is installed in their um, iPhone or Apple ecosystem, be it iPhone, iPad, Mac, and so on. And obviously, Apple was not happy about it. So what Apple did is, as and when they found out about it, they kicked Epic out. Now, in the world of mobile phones as well as operating system, there are only two major players, Google and Apple. And if Apple kicks out Epic, what are the repercussions? We're talking about 1 billion iPhone users that Epic could not get access to. So Epic was about to take a major hit on its revenues. It was more of a fight for survival for Epic. Right. So, of course, they did circumvent. They had stood up their own system. And as a result, the total revenue that they got by their own system was about $12 million. Apple said, if you guys want to come on our platform, first you pay us the lost revenue to us, which is going to be 30% of the $12 million that you've earned in this period of time. So that is what the Apple was demanding from Epic. Now, those of us I'm not included by the way, who are actually on the sides of Apple, who advocate from Apple's side. I'm not really talking about the lawyers that Apple has actually hired to fight for it in courts. 
I'm talking about people who are actually in favor of Apple in this particular legal battle. The argument that they make is very simple. They say it's not just the iPhone that they're talking about, by the way, which has a user base of more than a billion. But we're talking about the entire Apple's ecosystem. So an app, if it can be installed on an iPhone, the same app can also be installed on the iPad as well as on their Macs. It's all about the app developer itself. If they're able to make the app available on all the products within the Apple's ecosystem, then the customer can use it. And the customer does not have to pay for using these apps on all the products. You make the purchase from one product and you have it available in the entire Apple's ecosystem. So those who are in the favor of Apple, they say that Apple charging 30% for allowing access to the entire Apple's ecosystem for the apps developer is actually not too high. 30% is uh, very fair, especially considering the fact that Apple is actually the one that is maintaining this entire ecosystem and they always stay at the forefront when it comes to actually coming up with cutting edge technology and keeping their users as well as customer base happy. Now, coming back to what Epic did. Of course, Epic had stood up their own system. They were kicked out and as a result, they went to the court and they came up with 10 points that they alleged Apple being unfair on towards the app developers. And one of those 10 points was the allegation that Apple is acting as well as indeed is a monopoly. The court didn't agree with that. And this is considered to be a biggest win for Apple in this entire legal battle. Think of the repercussions of this ruling had courts actually agreed with the allegations and acknowledged that Apple actually is a monopoly. It could have opened a lot of other doors for other developers to also file lawsuits against Apple. So in a way, it's a big win for Apple as they were able to actually narrowly escape the possibility of further lawsuits in future because they were not acknowledged as monopoly by the court. Now, what happened to the 30% commission battle. Before we talk about that, mind you that out of those 10 point allegations against Apple, the experts are saying that Apple has actually won nine of those 10 points. And the only point of contention where Epic can also claim victory is the 30% contention, especially the fact that app developers are not allowed to stand up their own payment gateways. Court has said that the app developers should be given the freedom to allow their customers to make purchases through some other medium as well and it should not be restricted to the Apple's payment gateway only. Epic is claiming this to be a victory but if you think of it from Apple's point of view and that's where the analysts and experts are pitching in with their opinions on how this may impact Apple and its performance in future. What they're saying is that this will not have substantial impact on Apple's revenues, earnings, profit margins, and so on. Although other app developers may also get the ideas to be able to file lawsuits against Apple and have similar kind of cases going against them. But nonetheless, it has been taken as a win for Apple. Epic has said that they are going to appeal against some of the rulings of the court, but Apple has said nothing. They're more in playing it by ear kind of a mode. So as and when Epic comes back with their own appeal against some of the rulings by court, we would find out what is it that the Apple has to say in its own defense. But right now it looks like Apple has escaped from this legal battle at very minimal damage and it's epic that probably has a lot to lose and not apple so this is all that i wanted to cover in this video there have been a lot going on in terms of the battle between the two but not many people were aware what actually is going on on the ground and what are the matters on the line for both the companies i hope you found it useful as well as informative if i missed out on any key points to mention in this video please do add them in the comments and i would love to hear from you Thank you and I'll see you soon.